Of the many questions I get asked, should I buy a soundbar or install speakers, is one of the most common. So I'm gonna give you all that info in this video, from installation to cost to quality. Should you opt for a soundbar or a speaker system? What's up, I'm B, the installer, and I've installed TVs and home theaters, sound bars, and other consumer electronics for 15 years, and now help advise people here on YouTube. And I'm in my living room, which presents so many problems regarding audio, basically all the issues you can run into at once. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video, because with all the info I'm about to go over, the final exam will be, what am I gonna do in my own house based on the factors and issues that I'm about to get into? As we get into it, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button when you find this video useful and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you get informed on all the uploads. So of the three factors regarding if you should get a soundbar or a wired speaker system, installation is the most complicated and probably the most important to think about. And this should be broken down to whether you own or rent, is there any existing wiring in the room? And then if the room has direct attic space or not. And I'm going to mention a couple of the jobs I've done as test cases. First, we have my good friend Ed's home. I spent the better part of a week working on the two rooms in this house. Downstairs here, I've added HDMI cords and power for the TV and wiring for nine speakers. Actually 11, I think, but we hadn't put the outdoor ones in yet. Upstairs, there's a projector, powered screen and a Bose 5.1 system all wired into a side closet. Neither of the room was easy and I should have charged more for both. But as I said, he's a good friend. The important thing is that the installation of these rooms is extremely relevant to what you might do, so let me explain. First, downstairs is the main living area and there were no speaker wires already installed. And that right there can make a big difference. If you already have in-ceiling speakers installed and or wires terminating at a convenient location right where you want your TV, then it's already easier to think about adding an AVR or an audio video receiver but there were no wires here and on top of that there is no great route to run these wires because it's the first floor of a two-story home and that's very important as well because no direct attic space means that you'll have to cut a lot of drywall and manually find your way around from speaker to speaker cutting around the niche between joists either from front to the back of the room or left to the right not to mention adding HDMI's and other cords to the fireplace makes quite a solid mess you have drywall cutting dust and then repair and then you have to repaint the area all this means that you should prepare prepare for some pretty solid work if you don't have speakers or speaker wires already in wall, and even more work if you're planning on doing this in a room with another room directly above it. One pro tip that I have is that if you're dead set on getting speaker wires installed, then do this at the same time you're getting other work done, specifically can lighting installation. Both processes need very similar snaking of wires, either electrical or speakers. So you can tell your electrician and low voltage specialist that you have to get all the wiring installed before those can lights are put in. This can save a lot of time and effort. Now upstairs we get a little reprieve, at least in theory. Here there is attic space, so running speaker wires up into the attic is much easier. You can avoid almost all of your drywall cutting and repair if you simply identify where the speakers will go and cut down from the ceiling. The only downside to this room is that we have a projector, which tends to compensate complicated installations because you have to install a screen on one wall while you also have to put the projector in the back of the room with power and HDMI and in this case all the components into a third location, the closet. This is a critical point to installing projectors. The logistics can really complicate your installation. People don't really think about this before they talk to a contractor. And if you want to have speakers and an AVR with the projector, you're likely talking about three locations where you need to do work. And that's what made this room so difficult. Power in three areas, speaker wires going from closet out, HDMI from closet to the back of the room, and so on. Very labor intensive. But in this home, like all of my jobs, the one question that really helps my customers determine if they should do this sort of work from an installation and a cost perspective is do they rent or own the house? If you rent, then you're going to shell out a lot of cash to get someone else's home dialed in. And while not all fully wired installations are this labor intensive, Intensive. If you rent, you better find out early how much time and effort it will take you to get to your dream scenario. Ed had just purchased his home and was looking to be here for a while. He had already had the Bose system and projector for upstairs and the Kef speakers were already ordered for downstairs. I could already see that the installation would be very expensive and time consuming, but the desire to have this solid system here was more important than the cost. Though it's really hard to explain how messy and difficult it is to run speaker wires all over a new home, we got it finished and he really likes the results. But let's move on from the cost and talk about the sound quality. Now sound bars are getting better with each year that goes by. 
You can get your traditional Samsung or Sony or LG soundbar systems with seven or more channels. Typically, these systems complement your new TV purchase, both by integrating with your TV and remotes, while providing a much better sound quality than your TV speakers can offer, all at a decent price. And you can find something in most budgets that's pretty solid, but they don't normally have the power or the highest of fidelity that a fully wired home theater would. Then you have cool proprietary systems launched like the Sonos Arc or Sony HDA9 that are made to give you the best surround sound from fully wireless speakers while alleviating the issues of odd shaped rooms by allowing for some corrections by the systems themselves. Definitely expensive systems because of their ease of use, but are they really worth it or do they make it easier for everyone? Well, if I look back to Ed's home, there isn't a great case to be made for a soundbar in either of his rooms. If anything, I would say that many people would consider putting a soundbar under the TV and over the fireplace. Many customers of mine aren't too concerned with having a full nine channel system in their main living room. Most just want better sound than the TV can provide. So if you're in that boat, then you can bet an $800 Sonos Arc soundbar with the full five channel surround sound with two upward firing Dolby Atmos speakers would be far better than your TV speakers. You could even go far less expensive than that with a more basic 3.1 soundbar that just gets clear dialogue. And again, most brands make such a soundbar that you can find at Best Buy or Costco. So if you want simplicity and minimal work, the soundbar option is really a great way to go. If you have something like this projector screen though, it may not work. Many new soundbars require an HDMI connection from the TV or projector to the soundbar. So this would mean that besides trying to find a spot to hang the soundbar in this room, I'd also have to run an HDMI from the projector up into the ceiling and to the soundbar location. Basically, I would not recommend a soundbar in this room. But what could have worked, and maybe this is something that you'll consider for your room, is just installing three front speakers and not really worrying about surround speakers. Because when it comes down to overall sound quality, I think it's fair to look at it from multiple perspectives. Are you looking to be immersed in surround sound or just get the raw power and bass? I think there's no correct answer here and most people would like to have both. But as you consider installation and cost, you should also think about what sound quality is to you. If you just want to improve the dialogue from cable news or the occasional movie, then you probably don't need big speakers everywhere or even an 11 channel soundbar. But if you're a movie buff and you miss going to the theater, then a great alternative would be a powerful 3.1 system which includes two main speakers, a center channel, and a subwoofer, where you can keep all the speakers and components in a simple cabinet all in the front of the room. This would allow for a clean look with no visible wires, and you could buy a number of great speakers that would likely impact your TV watching as much or more than a sound bar, even with multiple surround sound speakers and upward firing channels. So this brings me back to my lovely abode. As you can see, my home is not really ideal for speaker wiring. I have all the red flags. I have vaulted ceilings that make it basically impossible to put in overhead speakers. And even if they weren't 20 feet up, they're at an angle, which is hard to then direct the sound. And at that height, it's preventing me from getting the wires to the back of the room. Then we also have hardwood floors. So running wires under the carpet, which isn't my favorite option anyways, is also out of the question. And lastly, the room is huge, not just from the seating area to the TV, but the volume the speakers have to fill. So I've been thinking about this for months. Currently, I have two options, the Sonos Arc and the Sony HDA9. Both great systems, but both with issues for my space. The Sonos Arc has pretty good sound for most rooms. I'm a fan, but with the size and the shape of this room, I'm trying to force this one speaker to match in sound what this awesome 83-inch OLED offers visually and it's not doing the trick. In addition, I'm not even getting the Atmos upward firing sound because of the vaulted ceilings. So the Sonos Arc is pretty underwhelming here. And on the other side, I really enjoy the Sony HDA9 because it has four speakers that can be placed pretty much anywhere and calibrated to work in most rooms. But this system needs you to create a phantom center channel by merging the two fronts, or it uses the big Sony OLED as a center. And in both cases, I'm having a similar issue getting great dialogue in this large room. There is sound everywhere, but from the main character straight at the couch. It leaves me wanting to turn up the main voices, but you can't. This includes too much from the rear speakers where we have to lower it for specific movies and shows. And like the Sono system, the vertical sound is not getting bounced off the ceiling to create the overhead effects. So what I think would be best for this room would be to get that traditional 3.1 speaker set up in the front 
where I can dial in the center channel and front separately and then get as big of a sub as I need. I think with this room and setup, loud and powerful speakers would be more useful than getting perfect 360 degree surround sound or even upward firing Atmos that I can't hear as it gets lost in the vertical void. In addition, if I really want rear speakers, I could run wires under this rug or even use a wireless rear speaker transmitter to get some sound behind us. Coming to this conclusion hasn't been easy. First, I do this for a living, and I try to predict issues, but many times people already have their products and their plans. Both of Ed's rooms were challenging, but if you know me by now, you know I'll get the work done. But all that work is why I made this video. It's difficult to predict, and the same goes for my house. It has only been after trying out the TV by itself and then two other expensive systems that I feel I'm worrying too much about the ease of use and the Atmos effect, when really what I want is just raw power coming from the TV. So what do you really need? Are you in the soundbar camp where it's either that you want better than TV sound quality or the logistics of your new home are preventing you from a larger system? Or maybe you just rent and you want to save this for your forever home. I think you can find a solid soundbar and sub for only a couple hundred dollars that can get you by. Or are you really wanting to get a full system, maybe 11 total speakers where you really feel like you're part of the movie? If so, then you should really think about the installation. Do you have any of these red flags? Or do you just already have the products and you're going hard regardless of the costs? I really think it comes down to finding a balance of installation, cost, and sound quality. Is this system gonna provide you with enjoyment or just be a headache? Let me know in the comments which camp you're in and if you have any other questions that I didn't cover here. I'm interested in hearing about the systems that you have. And make sure to smash the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. And hopefully, just like that, you can be the installer.